Hello everybody, welcome to another video of Andrew and Nicole. In this video, we're going to take a look at the net, a network attached storage or specifically the Synology DS1520+. Plus. Now, Synology and, uh, and this is one of the most famous brands for network attached storage. But what is a network attached storage? You might be wondering. Just a very brief overview. A network attached storage is like an external hard drive. Now, normally if you run out of space, you're going to buy one of these, a uh, one terabyte or 250, 500 gigabytes of hard disk, wherein you would copy your files here. Now, yes, at a short term use case scenario, this is a good tool. But if you're looking for a more robust or at least more flexible way to keep your storage, okay, not just copy over files, uh, you can even uh, use this one as a media player. If you run a uh, media server like Plex, or you can have your own Netflix, you can put all your medias here, and this one can serve as your, uh, you know, uh, where you can co connect to your network and play videos and music from your storage. Now, for our particular use case scenario, our church, since we, we've been doing a uh, network, uh, we've been doing online online worship. And we've been recording many footage, of videos. Uh, a lot of a lot, a lot of a lot, a lot of our footages are all saved saved in an external hard drives like this one. So we decided to invest in a network attached storage. Now the way the way network attached storage works is that you connect your network attached storage or your NAS to your existing network, wherein many computers can actually access the files stored here. Now. Uh, depending on your your use, you can actually buy a two-disc network storage, or even four or five. In our in our particular case, is a five-bay uh, NAS, and you can even buy sixteen or up to how many number of hard disks you can store. Now, this NAS actually is a a sort of a semi semi high end okay because we, we've been we, we're gonna use this for our production okay so for this particular nas we have five bays one two three four five now this this serves as the five different storage storage for at least five different hard drives no now the price of this nas okay without the hard disk inside is actually about forty two thousand pesos just for the box without the hard drive in it. Now it's about $800 converted and we bought five Seagate Ironwolf 12 terabytes of hard disk space. Now we loaded up all of them. Okay, each hard drive is about 21,000 pesos or $400. So we, this, all in all, this one would cost me or cost our, our church about less than 100,000 pesos. Now, the good thing about the Synology NAS is that if you run out of storage space, okay, you can actually just pop out one of the hard disks, okay, one of the hard drives, and you can just change and upgrade as you go along. Uh, take, for example, this one. You can just pull the lever, and you can pull the hard disk, okay? So, as you can see, this is our storage drive, 12 terabytes of Ironwolf Seagate. Okay, so all four of them are fitted. Okay, so I will not pull it one by one. But at least you would know. Okay, so let me just put, bring this back. Oh, uh, and if you need more storage space, you can actually just buy hard drives. For example, I think the biggest storage space for, for this particular Iron Wolf is 16 terabyte. So if we decided to fit, convert everything to 16 terabyte we will expand our storage now in case you still lack storage okay uh, you, you still have uh, plenty of medias or files that you need to save you can actually expand further okay so this particular box you can actually expand up to 15 15 freaking hard drives Okay, you need to buy a, a separate box that they can hook up with this one and that, that the NAS this one can read all of those hard drives separ separately okay as if uh, uh, on a separate box but as if it, it in a, in one <coughs> ecosystem 
okay? So now we're gonna take a look at the specs of the DS or the disk station DS1520 Plus. Now this is the official product page of uh, Synology. So I'll put all the links down below or you can actually search it for, by, by Google. Now just a brief overview, okay? So the DS1520 has a five drive base. So as I mentioned, we have a four core CPU that can accelerate using cache and it can perform 19.8% okay, for based on compute, uh, for computing intensive applications. And of course, in, in, it can expand up to 15 drives. Okay? So you can add in an M.2 slot for uh, caching. Okay, so there you go. So these are the, the specs. Okay, so, and you can also use this one for a personal cloud storage. Okay. The virtual machine manager, as I mentioned. Okay, you can do multimedia server streaming, hyper backup, okay, desktop backup, okay, event surveillance and virtual ma virtual manager. So the details are the follow are follows. I already shown you. So let's go to the specs. Okay. So hardware specs. Okay, this is powered by Intel Celeron J4125. Okay. So memory, eight gigs of memory, and you can uh, upgrade it actually. Okay, so five drive base. Okay, so I'll just quickly scroll through this, this, and you can just um, uh, pause the video. Now the file system actually this supports BTRFS and X4. Okay, and for external drives, remember I show you the USB. You can actually connect from FAT to NTFS to uh, Mac formatted or XFAT formatted drives. These are the, the these are the dimensions. Okay. Yeah. So there, there are your specs for the DS one five two zero. Okay. So I'll show the contents of the box is actually very simple. Okay. So you have a you have a the main unit which is this one. You have the power adapter. Okay. Power adapter that comes with a built-in power cord. Okay. Very simple. Okay, it, ca it came with a hard disk lock. Okay, this is a hard disk lock. Okay, so the way to do it is you can use this key to lock all of these hard drives so that nobody can pull it out without authorization. Okay, so this is the key and a bunch of screws for your hard disk. Okay, I'll show you how to remove the hard drives in it. And of course, a quick guide manual. And it also came with two LAN cable. Okay, two LAN cable. Now, Synology is good to provide two LAN cables, but the, uh, because the box in itself also has additional features wherein you can aggregate multiple uh, network connection. Okay, in fact, you can. I think you can aggregate up to four network connection from this box. I'll show you the box in itself. Okay, so it has a... Okay, let me just bring this down and show you this one. It's quite heavy including all the including all the hard drives inside. I don't want to drop this so we have to be very careful. Okay, so on the sides. Okay, and at the back. Okay, in, in the front this is this is a USB 3 uh, port this is the power and all of these LEDs will light up okay you'll see the LEDs light up when we are using the drive okay and at the back so you have two fans okay for ventilation and you see here you have four LAN ports you can actually connect up to four LAN uh, cables connected to your switch because this is this NAS can support multiple users at the same time. So if in case one LAN port is not enough, you can aggregate actually four uh, or allocate four to your switch. Now each of these ports is actually a gigabit gigabit uh, network. So this is the power. Okay, this is the power. 
and you have some expansions. This is the SATA expansions. Okay, and you have another USB here. Now, the USB, the, it functions as a uh, uh, quick backup. So remember, we have external hard drive, so you can actually plug it here. And you can program the Synology once you plug in your external hard drives or using USB. You can copy everything uh, to your NAS. Okay? And you have a reset here. Reset button. So I hope you can see it. So in case you lose your password, you can actually reset the password using this one or totally wipe the contents of your NAS. Okay? So let me show you how to to remove the hard drive space so just flick flick the tab and pull okay so you can actually remove you can remove the hard drives easily okay so you can opt to screw it or not but you can actually you can actually remove uh, these okay and easily install a new new hard drives okay so so you have a new hard drives here okay so you need to install a new one so this is the tray so just slot it in and install the lock now you can actually screw it okay the provided screws you can screw all the hard drives there but since we're not gonna do that it's just easier to just uh, put this easy locking mechanism okay so there so once you have installed it uh, let's say you, for example you're upgrading to a new 16 terabytes just plug it there now the good thing about Synology is automatically automatically it's the Synology operating system or the DS uh, this station manager that's the operating system name will automatically um, copy all the files for you okay so you don't have to worry and it might take some some time Okay, what are the other functions of a NAS? You might be wondering, why do you want to buy a NAS? Apart from storing uh, massive files or videos or music or photos for your family or your, your production, you can actually use the NAS in very uh, uh, various ways. One, for example, is you can use this as a cloud storage. If you're connected to the internet, you can actually set this up that you can access that your NAS outside of your internal network. Okay, of course, you have to set it up with your username and password, similar to a Google Drive. And speaking of Google Drive, you can actually sync your Google Drive uh, account in the NAS. So that if you sync anything to the Google Drive, this network NAS actually syncs also with your Google Drive. That way, you have a cloud storage outside your office or outside your home, and you have an internal storage uh, inside your network. Okay, another function of the NAS that is very useful is you can use this if you can uh, as a storage for your CCTV. Now, if you have a CCTV in your office and you don't have a DVR or an NVR, you can actually use this one. Okay, by hooking up IP cameras and all the recordings will be saved and stored and organized by the NAS. Now the other fun another function is what I mentioned a while ago is this is also a media server. Now I have my own personal NAS at home. It's actually a two bay NAS wherein I put in all our uh, uh, videos, uh, those videos that are personal to me or all our videos that I have uh, bought before or saved before. I have a NAS and uh, and I run a Plex server. Now if you're interested in Plex server. Uh, put down in the comments that you want me to do a video about Plex and I'll do another one next time. Now, a Plex uh, video server is actually a, a, a software to organize all your media. Okay, all your medias are here and 
uh, uh, instead of going to their Windows with Windows uh, Explorer and trying to find the folders, it will create a certain interface wherein where you, you can view your photos, your videos, and even music and play it wherever you are. Kind of like a sort of a, a uh, your own dedicated Netflix, if, if it's not a simple word for that. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at uh, uh, this one after we hook it up. Okay, as I mentioned, you, you need to hook it up in a network. Okay, you cannot hook up a computer directly here. I haven't tried it and I don't think it will work. So you need to have a network. Uh, then you will have to configure your uh, this station or this NAS uh, uh, via web browser. Okay, I'll show you the, the configuration and the, in the, the basic landing page next. So now we're going to take a look at the login screen of the DS1520 Plus. Now I already have set up this one. This is my address. This is a private address. And this is what the login screen looks like. Now if you have an older NAS or you haven't upgraded to the DS uh, version 7, DSM 7, you have DSM 6.2, that's the latest one from the, from the lower version. Uh, this one will be different. So this is a DS7 login screen already. Okay. So login. All right. So we are now logged in inside the screen. So. First up, this is the interface or the desktop of the Synology DS7. In, if you might be wondering uh, what, how does it feel, of course, it looks like a uh, Windows. So you have a start menu at the upper left and you have icons on the desktop. And there are several tabs here for you to, to explore. Now, let's go to this one first. This is what we call the widgets. Okay, you can actually check your uh, system performance or your Synology system performance over here. And your, you can check your resources and you can check all the, the connected users and the space that is still available. So currently, uh, you have 30, 31 gigs, of, uh, 31 terabytes of space. Now you can turn this on and off by using the widgets button here. Okay, so you can actually uh, move this one and you can actually uh, minimize, okay, okay, minimize, or make it bigger, and you can also pop it up, okay. So as you can see, it's already on top of here, okay. So it's already on, on the top of your upper right corner, okay. So you can also adjust the length, okay. So that's very handy, for a very quick glance of what your system looks like. Now, on, on the left side, you have the different icons. The package center is actually the App Store, some, some sort of like a Play Store, if you, if you, if you want to an, an, make an analogy. So the package center is where you, would, where you could download apps. Now, you can also do manual install. If you have downloaded a package in your computer and you want to install manually, some of the softwares in Synology, of course, are, are, uh, you can install from another source. But generally, all packages are here. Uh, all the available packages for this version of the Synology. Now, there are plenty, but uh, you don't need to install everything. It depends on your use case scenario. I will quickly scroll it, scroll down everything. Okay, so as you as you notice, there are also third-party soft softwares that you can install. Okay, so uh, what are the, th the recommended installations for for home use? Okay, so uh, basically, uh, I would recommend downloading the Download Station. Download Station is actually a simple app. It's like a download manager. You can actually upload a link and uh, the, the Synology NAS will download it for you. Even if your computer is turned off and your Synology is always on, so it will download in the background for you. Okay, what else? Uh, I also uh, suggest installing Cloud Sync. Okay, so Cloud Sync is actually like a, a software in Synology where you can uh, hook up your Google Drive, your Dropbox, your Microsoft OneDrive, where in the, the Cloud Sync app and the Google will automatically sync together. Okay, so this is very useful if you want to get a copy of your Google Drive files. Okay, so the, um, 
file station usually is installed by default this is actually your windows explorer later on we'll take a look at what how, how it works okay it's where you will see all your files okay and the uh, you can download the media server or node station and uh, smb service now this is actually very important uh, to to make your synology work with your windows explorer as if it's a file or it's a location in your computer you need an SMB service so if this is not installed in your Synology uh, I suggest you install it okay later I'll show you how to enable the SMB in your Windows Explorer okay so what else uh, there's there's the universal search okay so this one is very useful tool wherein you can uh, search everything in your Synology NAS of course within the bounds of your permission if you're the administration of course you can search everything okay and video station if you want to stream your videos uh, that, that, that are saved in the Synology and yeah some of these are are very useful it's up to you to check it out now another thing that I also uh, I like to install is a Plex Media server now I have my own Plex Media server and my personal NAS this is my church NAS so I will be installing this Media server okay that's the app store now let's go to the file station as I mentioned so the file station is like the Windows Explorer okay so you can create uh, folders these are actually shared folders that I have created and under those you can actually create some more so take for example this one uh, the disciple making ministry of our church so I created some some folders under under those okay so college fellowship whatever uh, high school fellowship young professionals fellowship okay so those people who have access on the DMM or the disciple making ministry uh, shared folder they can actually view and copy and you know upload files in this uh, uh, Synology server okay so these are the files are uh, the folders that I have now uh, you can actually link these folders to particular user permission or or, or or group permission so let me show you the control panel this is actually where you where all the settings can be changed or created or adjusted okay so so the system this is the info center okay so this is it will show you your server name okay dsm version oh, this is my email so i will blur that out and this is my quick connect ID. I also blur that out. So this is the serial numbers. I also blur those out. Okay. So network. Okay. So you can see all of these uh, services that are running. Okay. Even device analysis. Okay. Storage. So you can see I have five drives in the pool. I have one pool, volume one. Okay. So so you have a different login portals, applications. You can actually create different uh, uh, uh themes no? themes uh, for the login portal okay so regional options for your date time 24 hour for format let's do 12, 12 hour format let's click apply okay so let's go back there and uh, hardware modern notifications hardware and power so i have uh Enable, or you can enable wake up recovery from power outage so enable from uh, LAN okay and external devices you can actually plug in a USB drive and you will be able to see it here even a printer okay you can add a network printer okay so to update and restore so this is the the, the tab you can check you can check that I am updated 7 version 7 okay and you can also do configuration backup and system reset and reset all your data okay so yeah so basically if you are starting out what you need to do is to create your shared folder okay the shared uh, shared folders are like uh, uh, a folder in your Synology where you can create permissions for users or groups okay for example you can create a shared folder like this one so let's do a test Okay, so you can uh, either hide it in the, from the network places or hide some folders and files for from users without permission. Okay, so you can enable recycle bin or not. So you can also encrypt this folder. 
can create quota. So for example, I created this test folder. I want only a maximum of one terabyte. So if it's already filled, uh, no more files can be saved in that folder. Okay, so these are the settings. If I confirm, it will create on its own. And you will be uh, having a folder like this one. Okay, so, so file service, okay, as I mentioned, you have to enable SMB. Okay, so that you'll be able to to, 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 to query your Synology uh, directly from your Windows Explorer. Okay, so yeah, you can use this address. Okay, for example, I already set up my uh, Synology. In fact, we can, let's do it now. So let's, this is my computer. So let's copy this one. Okay, if I query, paste it, press enter. Okay, it will be asking of your credentials. If you create, if you have your credentials uh, logged in, let's see, let's do this. Uh, so press OK. Okay, so see, so I can query from my Windows Explorer all these files. So if I open it, it is as if it's a folder. Now you can, what you can do, you can actually map these drives. So you can map this to your uh, Windows Explorer. You can create a drive. As you notice, I already have a map uh, drive here, my videos and my uh, home for my, for my NAS. Once you map it, it will, it will be a it will be similar to like this one, the network location. So you have a home. So all of my uh, NAS, for my personal NAS at home, I'll be able to access this from my Windows. I don't have to go to the DSM uh, interface to open and copy files and, and whatnot. Okay, so very handy and useful tool. That's a, that's a big tip that I want to share. Okay, and this is where you create the users. Okay, so to create, you just plug in the name Okay, for example, let's do a test name, test name, okay, so next, password, you can just generate a, a, a password, so you can, you can add which group, okay, I already created some group, so by default, the users are already, already up, activated, so for example, I want this to make us a guest, okay, so next, so as you can see, in the guest group, I disallow any access except for the public folder. A public folder I created as a shared file, so everybody can just drop and mass drop everything there without any problem. So you can create, you can highlight all of these, okay? Uh, you can highlight these uh, to, to signify the, the permissions, or if you want, don't want to grant any access for this particular user, just say no access. So as you notice, the, the access is uh, no access, but if I unlike and un, 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 untick, it's read and write. Okay, so next. So you can also create a user quota for this particular person. So currently the public folder has a 100 gigabytes of limit. So that's the limit for this particular person. So for example, next. And you can also disallow uh, or uh, deny applications. So if you don't want them to be able to access the DSM, you can just deny. Uh, DSM. So DSM is the interface that you're looking right now. Okay. So you can also set the speed limit. Okay. And this is a summary. Okay. Before you go, you'll be asked to, to confirm. Now I will not be creating this user, so I just close it and cancel. Okay. So these are the users that I've created. Okay. These are all the the people that will be using the the Synology NAS. And these are the administrator. Oh, sorry. These are the groups that I have created as well. If you're members of the pastoral team, you'll definitely be a member of this one. Okay. So domain, you can actually set up a domain. Yeah, I'm not yet familiar with this one, but if you have your own personal email uh, domain, you can actually link the, the the Synology and you and you can use that domain. Okay. So yeah, for the network. Okay. So.
yeah so that's basically uh, oh by the way if you need help the dsm help is the the place to be so you can search you can search the the, the questions that you have and uh, the dsm help should be able to, to help you <laughs> Uh, but if you don't find it here, of course, Handy Google is your friend. Okay, so this is the very basic uh, interface of the, the DSM 7.0. And for the particular NAS, every Synology NAS will be similar to this one. Okay, let's go to the next part of the video. After showing you the operating system or the DSM or the Disk Station Manager uh, uh, from the browser, right, right in, after you hook it up, Okay, let me just discuss to you the pros and cons of a NAS compared to a traditional external hard drives. Now, a NAS by definition is a part of a network and, I, and the good thing about the NAS is that it is very reliable. Now, for a 2-bay or a 5-bay or maybe multiple bay uh, NAS, meaning multiple hard drives, you can actually set up a what we call redundancy or what we call RAID. Okay, Synology has its own RAID or called it SHR, but the good thing about this one is we can set this up that if one drive fails, okay, your data will not be deleted, corrupted, okay? Or you can even, in fact, set up two, up to uh, two hard drive failures. Say, out of the five that I have here, two of these are broken. I can get a replacement hard disk and plug it in and it will still work just fine, as if no data loss. That is the good thing about the NAS. So if you have a mission critical files that you need to save to back up, or you have a production needs that you need to always make sure that you can refer back the libraries or you can uh, retrieve the files, the NAS will serve its purpose for reliability and redundancy. Again, number two is compared to a cloud, Again, Google Cloud. Yes, Google Cloud is uh, cheaper if you have a, get a smaller space every year. But if you want a big storage space in the cloud, it will cost you plenty of thousands of pesos or dollars. Now, for example, this particular NAS that we have here, 5, 12 terabytes. It's actually 60 gigs of storage, but with two uh, drive failure redundancy. So I have a 33 terabyte of storage. Now, if you equate that to a cloud, you will pay multiple thousands of pesos every month and add it up for many years and you might as well buy a new uh, NAS. Okay, so this generally it is cheaper than the cloud. But the, the other, on the other hand, if you're just saving a few small drives, maybe one terabyte, of course, a external hard drive will be cheaper. Okay, so and the good thing about this one a NAS, it supports multi-user. If you have a external hard drive like this one, the only way to access this file is if you hook it up in your computer, one is to one. Unlike for a NAS, you can actually uh, connect in a network and multiple simultaneous people can access the NAS. And you can actually set administration uh, rights or access rights for the NAS, wherein not all people can access everything. For example, specific folders only, and you can actually streamline your workflow. For sensitive documents like financial standings, you can actually delegate some users that, that only they can access the files under the finance or under the, uh, the, you know, the fi finance section. Now, another, another good thing about this one is it is multi-purpose. As I mentioned, it can serve as a media server like Plex. It can also serve as a CCTV and of course, you can also use this one as a virtual machine uh, manager. For example, you can get this as a storage and you can allocate a virtual okay, via the network to create like a semi-virtual PC uh, hooked up on this one. And again, this NAS is very flexible and scalable. In, in, as I mentioned, if, you're, if you have five bays filled and you already upgraded all the storage drive to the maximum capacity, you can add another box wherein you can uh, add more drives in it. Of course, for external hard drives like this one, you can buy more of these, but it doesn't work integrated or at least working together. Imagine having to buy multiple external hard drives like this one, and you might miss out, where did I save the particular file? Is it this one or that one? So unlike a NAS, of course, you can uh, integrate everything in one 
giant storage. Speaking of giant storage, you can set this up in, in RAID. Okay, so RAID, uh, it again goes back to the main pros, is the reliability. And you can also set this up in case you don't want any redundancy. If you want, like this one, 5, 12 terabytes, 60 terabytes of one giant storage, you can do so. Okay, so, but again, if, you, if, if one of the drives fail without any fail safe or backed up uh, on the different drives, everything can be corrupted. Okay, so my opinion, my opinion, the NAS is uh, a good deal. No? Now, the, the negative thing about the NAS, okay, unlike the external hard drives like this one, just plug and play and you get to access your file. The NAS, you have to, you know, kind of study it a little bit and there's a learning curve in it. You can actually connect your Windows, uh, as I showed you, you can connect your Windows uh, to directly access from the file explorer or for the Mac. You can from the finder or, or, or you have a, or explorer so uh, this one has a little bit of a learning curve if you want to maximize the use of nas you have to dig deep but the feature set is actually good okay and another thing is that this is reliant to a network okay uh, it is very difficult to uh, use it just uh, a box in itself without connecting it to the network okay so you have to you have your own internal network now this is good if you have a small company or a a big bigger or bigger organization or have a production house that is all everybody's connected to a network now obviously this one is not portable okay unlike this one okay you can pop this in your bag and it's okay this one is not portable okay so that's one of the cons and of course it's more expensive uh, you have to buy the box and you have to buy the drives in itself unlike external hard drives like this one you can just buy it as a as a whole now would i recommend buying a NAS. Now, if you're an IT enthusiast uh, or you have, uh, you have a small organization that multiple users and you, or you, have a, uh, you know, want to have a cl personal cloud storage, of course, by all means, buy a NAS. It depends on your use case scenario. Now, if you're just one user and you're happy and contented with an external drive, then maybe the external drive is better fit for you. Now, I have run down all the pros and cons. It's up to you to decide. Now, put down in the comment section what is your use case scenario and if the NAS will work for you or not. Now, if you're a beginner, okay, you can um, go, go buy Synology. It's one of the easiest brand of NAS that you can configure. There are other brands, okay, of Synology, uh, other brands of NAS, but this one I think is a beginner friendly. Now, you can actually set up a, your own computer. Okay, you can actually get a computer and put multiple hard drives in service on NAS. But again, Synology is beginner friendly. And you don't even have to buy five drives at, the, at all at once. There is a two drive. At least get a NAS that is a two drive uh, NAS. Wherein you have a one redundancy uh, uh, hard drive failure. So there you have it guys. A uh, rundown of the pros and cons. I, I really hope that you learned something. Okay, so it, it will, if, you're, if you have any questions, you just put down in the comments below. Now, I forgot where we bought this specifically. They don't have, uh, or I, I, I forgot the name, but I put down all the links from the Lazada or the Shopee wherein you can buy this separately. And of course, all the hard drives that you can buy. Okay, now you can buy smaller hard drive space and it will still work fine. Okay, all the product links, official, I'll put all, everything down. Now, I hope you learned something from this video and thank you very much for supporting our channel. We are already nearing 2,000 subs and we are hoping we, by a year end, we can get uh, 2,000 subs. So please like the video and hit the subscribe button and tune in on the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.